All right, greetings. In the name of the Most High, uh, yeah, well, I spent a, a good deal of time. Well, first of all, I hope you're doing well. These are trying times, as you know, and, you know, we've, at least you know that on this, it might not have been the most pleasant thing to listen to, but you know that from the uh, the Zeph Report pods over the months here, that we've we've you know that the the reality you're in right now kind of mirrors what we've been saying. You know what I mean? It's like it's not like you were promised some sort of you know rose garden and now you've got uh, you know an asshole or something. You know that so you know not that that's any consolation, not that that's going to make you feel better, but. Uh, it might make you feel a little bit better, but I mean, at least we're 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 all talking about the same reality that we're all sharing, right? So, yeah, no, we never really bought into the to the whole thing that our troubles were over and the bad guys are being stopped, and you know, it's a new utopia. But, but there is something. There is this big change coming, and I believe that this big change that's coming is uh, there is a liberation coming. There is a, 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 a there is a mass awakening that has been in progress for some time. There is all this, just not on the schedule of, of man. You know, God has some amazing things for his people, and, you know, not the least of which is ex- spiritual expansion and the getting out of slavery, which, you know, without slavery, you know, that that is the global grip of slavery and the global grip of the uh, of the uh, these sick, twisted oligarchs, etc., um, you wouldn't have gang stalking as a topic. It's simply something that would never even, it would not occur. There would be no reason for its existence. The only reason for its existence is to serve uh, at the, the, the pleasure of the ones in power. And I'm just giving you a big picture now so that you understand the motivation. The whole point of which is to rule through fear and intimidation and to make sure that there's no one, you know, that, that, that all people can form and have the same thoughts or thought, you know, to have mass thought control. And if anything um, deviates from that thought control, from that thought grid, from that conscious thought bombardment that anything that doesn't behave normally, you know, is the ham, it's the nail that gets, you know, that sticks up, gets hammered down. And that's, you know, I know that's inadequate in terms of explaining your complete situation, but in in general terms, that is um, how stalking gets started. You know, usually it's uh, individuals that are, um, you know, politically incorrect, let's say, the, 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 obviously all, all Christians, all true Christians, uh, whistleblowers, <clears throat> people that could be in a position to rock the boat, whether they do or not. And, of course, you understand that at the very extreme, stalking ends in, in death of the, of the targets. You know, and uh, not just simply, you know, torture. And, and, and as far as the, the weapons that are concerned, um, the first stocking weapon used on the earth was really like a form of mass witchcraft, right? And anyone not conforming to that mass witchcraft, that, that enforced demonic possession, if you will, uh, would be um, therefore targeted for, for a death, actually. And... Uh, you know, you'd have like the, the village demon and everyone had to be a part of it. And if you weren't a part of it, then, <clears throat> you know, then you're, you're, you become the sacrifice for the pagan, for the pagan festival or whatever. Uh, it's, it's demonic. It's, it's, it's a very horrifying situation. Now, in, in, in my, lately I spent, you know, I don't ask me why, but I just felt led to, to watch all the videos of all the people that are, going through their, you know, gang stalking. I probably haven't seen all of yours, but I mean, seeing, you know, a good deal of what's what's out there lately, the last uh, the last year or two, you know, just kind of updating on 
what people are seeing, what people are experiencing, you know, how their experiences are similar, how they, they might be different. And there's one thing that's emerging, I'm happy to say, at long last, thank God. And uh, a little woozy here, so just, you know, bear with me. I'm, you know, we're, we're redeeming the time, folks. Um, many more are understanding this didn't just start a couple of years ago or when they voted the wrong way on something or when they raised their hand at the wrong moment when no one else did or when they, uh, when they um, you know, when they got fired from their job or, you know, some inciting incident that, that you could say, oh, that's normal, that this happened. Then the next thing I know, I was stalked. Now, they're starting to understand... Uh, many of them that have been trying to document their experience and having a kind of a hard time about it uh, and getting people to, you know, pay, you know, people pay attention and, you, you know, they view it, but it's almost like uh, voyeurs. Right? And who knows who the bulk of these people are. They could be your enemy for all that, all you know. But they're recognizing that the, the targeting did just start two years ago or three years ago, or 10 years ago, or 20 years ago. It started from the beginning. It was more subtle. It was not as, um, you, you know, it, it, it didn't seem so much like an emergency or like, a, you know, some kind of a apocalyptic event or some kind of awful thing that... Uh, where these setups keep occurring one after the other and you just can't get out. I mean, I, there's, you know, I've been through some pretty elaborate, I'd say very expensive setups, you know, and, you know, with a housewife, you know, take a whole, you know, movie set that you don't, you know, that's, that's artificial, you know, that sort of thing, where it's all just one big spy network on you, you know, where there's no way out. And, you know, the other, the dangerous thing, the other, other thing that ties a lot of these vids together at this point, not only did this, the targeting begin long, long ago, and I mean, I can tell you when it started, but I mean, you know, you're not going to believe me unless you're, you're, you're on the spiritual path. You won't, you won't understand. And they're starting to realize that the whole point of the targeting is their death. It's not, you know, this ongoing torture there is an end point called death. And, uh, you know, the de first de degradation, which is, that, and that's Satan. That's what, Satan wants to degrade humanity, degrade people, and, and feed off the degradation, and then the death, the sacrifice. And it's all being done <clears throat> by people that are, that are um, serving the greater demonic... Um, community that is looking for that degradation and that harm and that trauma to feed off of. And then, of course, death being a, a, a blood sacrifice to uh, Satan. And people have to realize that even if they don't understand that language I just said, they're more secular kind of people, it doesn't matter what you think. That's what they believe. That's what they're following. Because when, they, when someone dies... When someone is degraded, they get credit, right? They get paid. When someone dies, they get paid. They get they get a pop. They get a benefit. And they're addicted to the degradation and addicted to the bullying and addicted to hurting other people for their own sustenance. And that's that's the satanic way, if you like. You know? Um, don't look for them out in the woods somewhere with an altar. This You are their altar. You are... Um, the commodity that they're they're harvesting, and it's really it's the 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 sad thing about it is that there's an internet there's an interdimensional aspect to it that um, and we've checked this I've checked this over the years you know it's I, I don't think I'm inaccurate I may not describe it perfectly but that that has to do with <clears throat> they you know the people that you that you think you know or that you think you see are often shifting. They're often not the same people. You know, it gets pretty crazy. Just like I remember I was in a Barnes & Noble bookstore and it switched. And the person I was meeting with had no relation to the, the, the person that uh, exists 
and he was tied in with the stalkers. He started whistling and doing all these noises, and then other people were echoing the noises around the bookstore like they were all in on it. And I couldn't believe it. It was just like this debate, but I, but I caught what happened. It was a dimensional shift, okay? And that that bookstore, that configuration of the bookstore and the people in it, though they are identical, are not the, they're not the people that, if you go back again, you know, a half hour later, they're not the same people that were there before. So that answers the question of why do they do something or say some key word to you or phrase and then when you ask them about it, they act like they never, they don't know what you're talking about. Are they just great actors? Well, sometimes they are. But I mean, other times, it's way more spookier than that. Other times, they are uh, not the same people. And I don't know how the enemy does this. I don't know how this happens. It's like we're in a dream state being manipulated, right? And in a dream state, things can be changed around. If you could just look at your targeting and gang stalking as a dream state, that you're existing in a dream state, right? And you know how things are in dreams, right? Huh? And in dreams, it seems like a lot of paranoid dreams uh, seem like stalking dreams, don't they? And it's amazing how things pop out of nowhere. Well, then apply that dream state to reality that you think is reality. And let's just assume for a minute that's a dream state that could, that's being manipulated by people that just uh, are are do you know are doing their setups from some you know D wave computer or something, okay? And they're doing it en masse to masses of people, you know. So they have algorithms that handle it, right? So it gets kind of beyond your local you know police station or your you know your sort sort of Stasi kind of tactics. It gets it, it, it it's it's a global epidemic of targeted harassment. And and when people complain about it, it's it doesn't exist because there's no connection, there's no proof, because uh, the reality is, you know, there's proof in one reality but not in another, and realities are shifting. And you know, if anyone has followed the Mandela effect, you know how they can do this. You you understand how things can shift like that, right? To where there's absolute proof in one, and then no proof in the next twenty minutes from now. But you think you're in the same place. It just seems like, well, what happened? What changed? They, they're very clever. They changed it on me. I can't get the proof. Well, <laughs> yeah, but it's a, a much more sophisticated change than what you're thinking of. The same glimpses that you have, okay, of reality, the same glimpses you're getting, this glimpse of something much bigger, almost, you know, universal or multidimensional, this getting a glimpse here and there, but unable to really bring it to 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 speak about it because it just seems so mind boggling, is in fact the very thing that's going to be liberating you in the end. The very thing that you're going to be, you know, when this veil is lifted, when this when this thing is adjudicated, when this end comes to this situation, uh, we're kind of building to a crescendo right now. What opens up is, you know, the 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 the, the end of it is. Um, you you will definitely be rewarded, just like you know you've stayed the course. Those of you who follow Jesus Christ will be having been easy, but every one of you is targeted, and all the other people that are targeted are also followers of Jesus. They just don't know it yet, because they're going to realize that only with the power of the name of Jesus can you you know can you manage all this. Otherwise, you're going to go nuts trying to do it on your own because everything that you're looking at is above your understanding. It's above your intellect. And no matter how much you try to wrap your mind around it, you can't. And no matter how much you try to get video proof on it, it's just not going to sell in a, in, a, in a court of law. It's, it seemed like there was proof right there. And then when you look at the tape again, let's face it, the tape changed. Oh, I know that was a big aha for like there's I can see millions of you right now just going, oh, my God, that's right. The tape changed. Yes, the videotape changes, doesn't it? Every time, not once in a while, but every time. Well, how can that be unless you're psychotic? No, you're not psychotic. The tape changed. The set changed. The people changed. It all changed, making you look like a raving lunatic. That's the level we're talking about. And that's what's been hard for me to put over to people. Now, 
for myself, being whatever individual I am, this has been going on since my earliest memories are, you know, basically my earliest memories of being alive are memories of being targeted. So this is not anything new, which is people think because I seem to manage myself okay or speak okay or I'm not ranting and raving about it all the time, they think, oh, well, you're not really, you know, having a problem. Well, my problem is there's persecution, as you can see in bullying that's going on. Now it's mainstream. It's a total epidemic, right? So it's happening, you know, to anyone who thinks, who has a, a free thought system within themselves, who are still intact. Every intact person is being targeted right now as we speak. So you guys who have been, you know, in the smaller community now realize it's going, it's global, then realize it's it's beyond global, it's universal, it's interdimensional, it's, it's just so far beyond that you can't get your mind around it. And it's, um, it's actually going to go to the very individual that you are before you were even born here. You were targeted, you see. Before you ever breathed your first breath. And that, you know, I, again, that should be easier to get your mind around now that you see the interdimensionality of it and how, you know, just like you say, the video evidence changes. Right, you got him on camera. You, you heard, you have, a, you have the audio. That proves it. And poof. Uh, does it really? Not really. But it was on the tape. I... It was in the images. It was uh, the people were there. The cars were there. They were following me. They were. They were. You know, I walked into a place. They were all waiting for me and having weird grins on their face. I, I caught it. I, I had my camera on. I had my phone on. I. I'm sorry. I spent a lot of my teenage years, you know, wondering how in the world, you know, fellow high school students, everything could change and become like demons, right? Well, here's the change they went through. They lost their minds and they lost their souls when they were young as a kind of a, a social conformity to uh, a certain world that we're in that, that most people don't realize is you know, pretty much pure evil, right? And they were absorbed into that or they were conformed into it or initiated into it. And through their free will, they gave themselves over to that reality so that they could, quote, live, end quote. Because that's not a living, that's a dying, that's a death, okay? A death of that person uh, spiritually. Now, if you like a second death, whatever. And they take their masks on, they're grinning, <laughs> coming at you. And they're, they're, they're arranging you to go to places and they're waiting for you. They tell you about a party to go to and it's all about you. They're all sitting there staring at you, you know, doing one setup after another on you, on you, on you, until you're finally ejected. They all give each other high fives. This was my youth. Oh, it gets more insane than that. You know, some of the things I don't say because it makes me look like, you know, sound nuts, but basically that there's no end to the amount of money they'll spend. There's no end to the amount of, uh, Ill, to, to, to the end of how elaborate their setups can be. I mean, to, to the point of flying somewhere and having them wait for you at the airport or the other end. I mean, you, you don't tell anyone where you're going, you know, just, just completely, complete insanity. You know, the stuff that, 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 that will trigger you and drive you back to your, say your hotel room where you'll, You'll you'll flip into another personality because you, you, it'll trigger you into another you know to, to into denial. Let's say into another person who can who didn't hear that you know when they go. We know who you are. This is all real. I don't mean to trigger anybody. I'm just saying these are some of the some of the things that get said. Uh, you know, you're lying. Yeah, I'm going to have it right down there. I don't need another one. We know who you are. Uh, 
or <laughs> that's actually small time stuff. I like it when it finally gets into names of you know like your mother or your you know your uh, daughter or your wife or your friend or whatever. Then there's the imitation of voices, mimicking others whom you know, you know, kind of doing an impersonation of that voice. And then you look to confront them, and they, just like it evaporates. And it's all getting you to look for shelter, and then they know where you're going to go, and so they're there too. So seemingly unrelated people are seemingly part of the same setup, uh, across the city, across the nation, across the world, all in complete coordination, all completely 100% verifiable. And it's 100% that you're not crazy, but it's actually going on. It's un- it's unbelievable. And then every once in a while, I hint from the side of the stage, hey, it's all real. Hey, what are you going to do about it? You know, you remove... Like there's something you can do to turn it off. When there's nothing you can do to turn it off. That's the thing. It's like you keep thinking, oh, well, if I just gave in to Satan, if I just let that the group have me, no, nothing doing. You know, that's just going to be the end of you. See, the whole point of it is that you can't, you know, you're not getting out of it. This is, it's just permanent. A couple things for you to understand about this. You know, it's above and beyond your intellect. There's, you know, there's, you just, I know that the instinct is to get it solved once and for all, that it's basically <clears throat> the local PD, and it's these guys, it's that guy, it's COINTELPRO, it's the FBI, it's the, and they're just doing this, you know, like a program, and it's the high intelligence of the NSA or whatever, and they're using their architecture and their and their algorithms, and they actually are using algorithms now on everyone, you know, to, to trigger them into feeling bad, to trigger most people into be having, you know, they're able to manipulate consciousness through Facebook and through, you know, social media and across the world and through through television and shows, and most of that kind of targeting is just basically. Let's take the most sensitive individuals in our society and just make them feel like killing themselves. Make them feel like even when there's no trouble, that they're in trouble, that there's trouble. Or let's make them feel guilty that they're not doing something, and but they don't know what it is. Meanwhile, uh, while all that's going on, uh, the, 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 the trillion-dollar industry of human trafficking is going unabated, and, uh, you know, the uh, sickos that run this whole thing and the interdimensional aspects and other, you know, demons, beings, aliens, whatever you want to call it, who are running the whole show. There's an alien component, too, of, well, you know, UFOs, aliens, all that. That's a part of it as well, you know. But, you know, it just depends what your experience is. If that's not your experience, you won't see that. If that is your experience, you, you will you will be stalked through that lens of, The alien thing, and I can tell you that's not very pleasant. But it's all connected to the same thing. You go, it's the government. Well, yeah, you know, technically, I guess in a way, but really it's a much bigger thing. So in watching all the videos, and I'm seeing, you know, where where people are going and, you know, they show that there's, there's, you know, cops that will be showed up there and waiting and, you know, other people will be waiting and you go into a place and they have a certain phrase they say to you, no matter what place you go into. And, uh, you so you're trying to document it. And that's what most people's videos are just trying to document what has actually happened and try to talk to people and get them to actually come clean and admit, okay, there is, there is something going on. Well, you could talk to 50 people on the street and they would go, okay, you're right, there is something going on. <clears throat> That's right, you know, thank God I'm not you. I've had that one before. Random stranger, yeah, there's something going on and thank God I'm not you. You know, better you than me. <laughs> really, what do you know? Uh, well, I didn't say anything. What are you talking about? What's wrong with you? You didn't say anything. You just said, better you than me. No, I didn't. Huh? Hands? How many? (laughs) 
Yeah, well, that happens in families too. Stalking oftentimes begins in the family that you're in. Uh, Controllers and handlers are stalkers. And they communicate to other people that are stalking you. They communicate your intimate details to them so they can hit you with it later on at random and scare you. What's the point of scaring you? Adrenaline. What do they do with the adrenaline? They feed off it in another dimension, for one thing, but then they know you're going to go hide. Okay, where are you going to hide? Okay, they know where you live. They know you're going to hide. So they're just going to keep doing one setup after another as long as you're getting scared and pumping adrenaline. As long as you're pumping adrenaline, spiritually they can feed off that. So you're feeding a big machine, you know, a big beast. And that beast runs the world. And like I say, it's above, you know, it's above your ability to comprehend. It's above, it's above our linear mind. It's not above our spiritual mind, though, see. And the spirit, with the Holy Spirit, I know all things. Nothing is above my mind. I may not be able to speak it in our language and terms because it's too limited, but I know that I know what's happening. You know, I know that it's a universal phenomenon. I know that uh, the micro and the macro, you know, I know the, the basically that I am, I am. And that there is, you know, nothing else. So, in other words, I am not some small and significant thing that's running around being, you know, targeted by the majority of bullies. And I also know, I remember one time I was really happy. And, you know, this is what I I suspected. I was being kind of watched on like, you know, uh, day in, day out on on like closed circuit TV. This, Back then, you know, like that, they the, the, there was a story they were watching. Like I was like a reality show, and they're all watching me because they could jump in any time on the timeline. Like I'd go to a, you know, down to the store to to you know, and I would, and they go a random stranger. Oh, you're happy today? Good. Like they've been watching, you know, the last couple of weeks, the 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 episodes as they unfold. So they knew all about me, a random stranger. Oh, hey, you look happy today. Wow. Like, gosh, you you know, after all the stuff that we've done to you, you still have a smile on your face? Wow, that was the context. And on that, I mean, that's enough to make, that make you think it's the entire city of Los Angeles. Wow, you look happy today. It's not amazing. Well, you've been watching? Yeah, I've been watching every episode. I wouldn't miss it. We're all just wondering if you're ever going to, you know, get out of it. Are you going to join the bad, the dark side? Are you going to, you going to, you know, how are you going to get out of this? You're in a pickle. It must be awful being you. Tell me all about it. Oh, poor baby. I'm so sorry. And then the sarcasm and then the lack of humanity and then, you know, getting you to confess that you've been really troubled and you've been hurt and you don't know what to do and you're frightened and you and you just need some help and they act like they're going to be your helper and they're going to put a nice, you know, give you a nice warm hug and put an arm around you and the next thing you know, they're the devil taunting you. You know, just another mask removed. It's the same devil in every single person is the same person that you just saw with a different mask. Oh, yeah, you want to get deep into it. Let's do it. Let's get deep into it. You want to get into the real fine points of this. I can take you there. Every single person is that same person, just with a different face, a different body. How is that possible? Well, it's not possible with modern-day technology. That's impossible. It's not possible just with the local police department or the local bullies on the corner there with their bicycles that are following you. It's not possible through your your normal sense of, you know, state of cognition. It's only possible, only, if you're targeted on a universal basis that, that it goes beyond this dimension. That's the only way it actually makes sense. Because all those people that are that are interchangeable, 
you see them another, you know, couple weeks later, they all seem back to normal. So there's no proof there. No poof, no proof, poof, no proof, poof, no proof. The, the tape changed. The video changed. The place changed. The evidence changed. How do they do that? It's above your, you can't, you know, there's no use trying to, it'll drive you mad trying to figure it out. Suffice to say that the only way this could be changed or your fate can be changed is at the axis of the entire universe has to be changed in in your you know to your favor and the only thing i know that does that is prayer in the name of jesus christ and and god's mercy upon you and god being able to move the dimensions which he does every day and changing your soul track you know in other words you may be doing some really bad sin patterns you might be into i mean people are into things like you know uh we all know, I mean, we all know what we do, right? But all those things that fall short and are sinful uh, themselves, you know, attract this kind of thing. So, you know, people tend to go on a fast or whatever, trying to, you know, trying to, you know, minimize their flesh damage because the flesh uh, actually gives permission, whether you know it or not, your flesh has to kind of give permission to be stalked in the first place. And you say, well, I haven't done anything wrong. I've been lived like a monk. I've, I have no life. I don't, what are you talking about? I say, well, there's just something in you. I don't know what it is, but it's something God will change. You know, and God is love. I mean, I know that's occluded for people, but when people don't believe that, they don't believe God is love, and they don't see that, they just see everything as being evil, everything as being bad. Okay, that's a default. That's a, that's a, a, a default position, but that's a flaw in the f- flesh, it's it's called the lack of uh, discernment. When people live in that state of resentment and anger and fury and hostility, uh, you know, oftentimes people in that kind of state where they just feel like they life has not delivered up what it was supposed to, they just have a state of resentment going. Most all of the the so called targeted people that I have. You know, which now it's like, you know, you're talking about, I guess, half the population. So, you know, but only a small portion understand, right? No, no, that that, that's the case. Uh, They all have resentment and anger issues because, I mean, you know, you're being picked on. Of course you're angry. Uh, But the Lord needs to take that off of you, you know, in other words, you need, to, you need to see that the universe could be altered, you need to see that God loves you, you need to see that there's a another way besides your own intellect, which will fail you every time. And now to the people losing sleep and, and all that, I mean, I've, you know, being beamed and all that stuff, look, there's not much we can do about that, you know, that I'm not here to give you, you know, a, a complete solution, but I'm here to say that a lot of the things that people are complaining about you know, that, that, that are happening, you know, the microwaving and the, you know, the sonic, the, now we have sonic weapons that are, that are disorienting people and actually causing brain damage, okay? That, that there's, you know, the, the main thing that we're bombarded with, okay? The main thing that, that sets all this in motion and sets all the trauma and the adrenaline flowing is we're hit with ELF waves. ELF waves make you feel t- a sense of tension and like something bad's about to happen. Hence, you're pumping adrenaline. This is over the mass population. This is coming from your towers and from you know wherever they can they can generate that signal from. It's not audible to your ear. You just feel it when you go to a movie and you see there's a tense moment. They run the subwoofers. The, the guys mixing the movie, you know, during the mixing, they have a like a button. You have a, you know, a row of effects that one of them is just hit the sub. They're called subs. They hit the subs to produce tension in the audience to tell the audience something bad's about to happen. Pay attention, right? It's moving, and you feel that tension, and then something happens. 
Okay, so the same thing, you know, is to, is a society control. And all of this stuff that's going on, and, and of course, anyone who whistleblows on it, anything like that, they themselves get targeted, usually wound up suicided somewhere. And of course, it also goes to, the, to, to turning the air into a plasma that can be electrified also for the purpose of setting frequency and people that are that are infected with nanobots and things, you know, to to use them as part of the uh, the electric grid, and all of that is be is just horrible. It's it's a horrible. It's total hell. It's complete hell. And the more sensitive among us, the the way it looks to me, are the ones reacting and trying to you know be whistleblowers about this and point the finger and say they're gang stalking me, they're stalking me, they're they're people out there I don't know, they're license plates out there I've never seen before. Look, they're coalescing. I get to the corner, all of a sudden there's fifteen people. I I th- <clears throat> this is gang stalking one oh one. You try to go to the market, you you take your cart down the aisle and you want to get something like say some chilies or something from the Mexican food section or whatever. And you go over there, then there's fifteen people in front of you, something you can't get to what you want. And it happens over and over again. I mean, this is, uh, and none of these people know each other. And you're, you're in a foreign land where you, you know, you're just, uh, it happened to me in Hawaii where I was in the market just trying to get a few things. And it just, it, it happened to where the people I was with, they said, gosh, have you seen that? I go, yeah, it's on. They're doing it. They don't even know each other. They're, Hello, zombies. So what I would do is I go up to the person, you know what I mean? I wave in their face. Hi, hi. How are you? And no effect. They just <laughs> and they just they just keep at it, you know, acting like they don't know what you're talking about. And they, they don't acknowledge that you exist. You know, they, they won't look at you. <laughs> Busted. Those are some of the more fun moments I've had. I used to like walk up to people, like there'd be a whole restaurant full of people just targeting me. You know, all the all of them suddenly summon there. All the patrons who were there have paid their bill and gone on. All the new people coming in are there just to target you. They all just stare at you. Here's the worst one I went through, one of the worst things. They all order the same thing you ordered. (laughs) That one. Anybody. (laughs) While staring at you. While being like zombies. And then every once in a while, someone gets pissed off. I'm not doing this anymore. And they get up and they storm out. Who are they? How'd they know to do that? And look, a couple of the ones, the programming broke and they stormed out. Pretty much admitting it all. It's one big charade, this reality. Where do they live? Off stage? The answer is yes, they live off stage. You're on stage, they're off stage. Get it? So no matter where you go in the world, they're waiting for you. No matter where you go, when you try to go to sleep, they're always waiting waiting in your dreams. What do they do? They're trying to trap you somewhere. One of One of my favorite ones is I can't find my keys. And I keep asking people in the building, do you know where they are? They keep sending me around the building. But now, and after a while, it looks like they're all lying about my keys. They're not going to give me my keys. I'm not going to be able to get in my car and go home. They're trapping me here. Hello, anybody? That's right. It's all about keeping you here. It's all about preventing... X. What is X? They have to stop X from happening. They don't want X to happen. And you guys are threatening, you know, to expose something here. We can't let that happen because then X would happen. If X happens, it's all over (laughs) for the entire universe. We can't allow that to happen. So we must do what we do. Lockdown control, trapping you here in your mind, in your house, in your apartment. No, 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 no. You're, 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 you're a being. You're, you're human. 
the entire existence of all things created is your is your domain, not being trapped here. All of this is designed to keep you here, keep you in a, in a, in a virtual cage and then stick you with needles all day long to feed off what you produce. And that's a very important thing. The harvesting of what you produce in the spiritual realm, i.e. trauma, is people belittle that because they can't see how, how do they feed on that. Well, there are beings in another dimension that you can't see that, that are sitting there next to your bed right now waiting to feed off you. And if you had different eyes or four-dimensional eyes, you'd see them. They're all around us. And the only way that they can live is to feed off your trouble, trauma, death, death struggle, uh, fear, paranoia, whatever. So they and the news media and everyone else keeps it going all day long to make sure you are uh, living in fear. Now, in terms of the nuts and bolts, you know, in terms of, you know, what agencies and people say police agencies, the government and all that, well, the government also is like blocking the UFOs. I mean, there's the, the government's also, you know, the government, quote, 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 is blocking X. What's X? Your freedom. You're, you're in a prison. You're in a cage. You, you know, your parents never got out of it. You, you, you haven't gotten out of it. Your kids aren't out of it. You're stuck. And because you're more prescient, more intelligent than others, you're targeted because you can see there's some kind of sinister plot or conspiracy behind it. But then when you get targeted, you don't worry about humanity anymore. You're worried about yourself. Exactly. You don't look at the bigger picture anymore. You're just trying to get through. And I know how it is. I know how it is being out on like Victory Boulevard in LA and one of them pulls up next to you and you know where they're going to shoot you or what. The, and they say some silly thing that just happens to trigger you because it's something that you just dealt with or said to someone on the phone. And the next thing you do, you run and hide under your bed. I mean, I know all that, but I can't live that way. I got to keep my eye on what's the big picture. The big picture is the end of this is coming. The big picture is a massive change is coming. The big picture is they're losing, they're, they're ultimately going to lose control totally, which would be the end of them. So they're going to fight and do everything they can do to maintain control of this paradigm until they're obliterated, <clears throat> until it's just, it just no longer relevant, until they, they have no more power. They're going to hold on to the, to, to what, what, so their fingernails fall off. And that means they're going to hold on to you. Had you not been as intelligent as you are, had you not been as talented as you are in certain cases, had you not been as uh, the same spirit that you are, they would have left you alone. Because, see, you really belong to X. You don't belong to this. You don't belong here. It's very important to understand that. This is not your home. And you don't belong here. You're trying to figure out why you're incarcerated. And, uh, you know, no one will tell you. I've, I've gone around asking people, why am I here? Why are you torturing me? Why are you, you know, why, why are you, you know, the, I mean, you go to the hospital, there's a whole new experience of misdiagnosis and, you know, wrong blood and <laughs> very dangerous things. Nothing safe. Nowhere. Nowhere you can go. It's all, all, they all know you. Everywhere you look, they know you. And they'll say, and we've known you for a very, very long time. We've known you and we know everything about you. From day one. And uh, so what are you going to do about it? And what that question means, folks, is are you going to play ball with them, with your stalkers and bullies 
and the technology and the military and the military industrial complex and the and outer space and the moon and the stars. And the, are you going to play ball here? And in some cases, they don't make that offer of playing ball because they know it's a, a lost cause. So they figure, ah, I get to mess with this person for free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My own personal uh, slave that I get to torture and poke and just in general ruin their life every single day. Uh, here's one setup. How, how's this one? The false interview. Yeah, this job pays really well and you're going to be able to, uh, you know, we really like you and you really, you know, here, come to the uh, barbecue we're having down at, uh, you know, Marina Del Rey and, and uh, you know, and meet uh, some of your fellow uh, workers or just try to get to know you a little bit before the job starts. Cool. Wow, I think that, that'd be great. That would solve so many problems. I've been, you know, I've just been almost down and out. I'm just barely scraping by. Oh, yeah, we know how much you need this, of course, but uh, your unique talent will be wonderful. And then you go to report for work, and the office is empty. There is, There never was a company there. <laughs> it can get even much more elaborate than that. I mean, you know, it, 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 it could get to where your husband, your wife, your children, your job, your entire existence is false. 100% controlled. 100% artificial. And you know it, you suspect it, but you get beaten back down to accept your lot. And, you know, this is your family. This, this is what you do together. This is what... You know, why question it? No, there's no setup here. If you keep saying that, they're going to throw you in the loony bin. Now, <clears throat> admittedly, a lot of people have not experienced setups on that level and and you know that's more more or less the organic you know gang stalking bullying uh crowding um following uh harassment electronic harassment microwaving cooking a uh, remote thoughts remote thought control mk ultra you know and all that but mk ultra you have to understand control goes into families and into jobs and into community the entire community is artificial the entire job market is artificial. Your destiny with that job that you were seeking. Now, it could also go another way. You go there, they hire you. And then they, the, the fun begins the day you begin your job. You know, they're passing you by. They're, they're giving you the lousy offer. They're, they're whispering just, at the, just out of earshot. They're, you know, you're, you're hearing things in your head. You're hearing voices. And, and it's just... It's driving you mad. It's cold, but you need the job because you need a paycheck, and it's and it's it's like you're going to take a paycheck, but you've entered into a torture chamber. Uh, then you go home only to find out your family is another torture chamber. It's artificial too, and then you find out that uh, all your friends are artificial. They were just assigned to you. None of them are really real. They're just it's all assignments. It's one big Jason board uh, mind control adventure. And it doesn't stop there. And that, right, what I just described there is enough to drive most people right off the edge. But it gets even more elaborate. And so finally, you've got to give it up and say, you know what, Zeph, you're right. This is really beyond my ability to, you know, I, I can't, that's too much. And I, and I, as I told you, it, the, the key to this thing is not the intellect. You can only beat it in the spiritual realm. Prayer in the name of Jesus Christ is all you've really got. Because you're outnumbered, you're outgunned, you're, you, there's nowhere you can go, nowhere you can run, nowhere you can hide. You're done. 
You're fini. It's over. So it's over. They come to you. It's over. So what are you going to do? They will, in many cases, offer you a way to become their slave, you know, to, to work your way up the ladder of being on the other side. But, of course, that's the end of your soul. But, yeah, that offer is out there for people that are not too – if you're really smart, they will never offer anything because you're just a threat. And even if you're playing ball for them, you're a threat. Threat assessment. You know, we've had all kinds of sci-fi stuff of – you know, they, they scan you at the airport and they're looking at you and they see that, you know, you pop up on the screen, they have facial recognition, they know everything about you. <clears throat> and they start sending in the props, sending in the actors, sending in the thing. I mean, I've been, it, it's, it's, it's unbelievable how, uh, how intricate this, this web of, of, of total lies and deceit is and how global it is and how, inter- and how immediate it is. You could go to, you know, I don't care, Timbuktu, Guam or someplace or, out in the middle of nowhere, they show up. They're there to make sure that you know that your entire reality is artificial. Nothing is real. Nothing about this experience climbing the Himalayas or whatever, or Mount Everest is real. Nothing about this ski trip to the Alps is real. Nothing about this uh, cruise on the Mediterranean is real. Nothing, nothing. The whole ship, the whole crew, would you have the nerve to get on a cruise boat, uh, being a targeted individual, would you go get? Would you sign up and then go on a cruise out of like Fort Lauderdale and, and go on a little cruise of the Caribbean? I well, at this point, I would just. I, I just. It's always amusing, but I mean, not to tempt the Lord. I mean, if you know, I don't want to be a sardine uh, on a little ship, you know that that with everybody's vibes and stuff. I, I don't think I could handle that. You know that you could get on that ship and it, the first couple of days, it seems normal. You know what I mean? You're out there with your book and you're reading and you're you're having, you know, there's food everywhere and, you know, you're over at the pool area and you're, you know, you're, you're back in your little state room and having your shower and then getting ready to, to you're know, going into those casino or dinner and then you see a show and then it all seems kind of normal right I'm just speculating I don't take cruises I I wouldn't it wouldn't even occur to me to go on one but you know let's say you've you've done that you know you're trying to have a semblance of a normal life and then on day three and you got seven days out there at sea right seven days and day three, it starts in. You can't believe it. You just, it was going fine. And then all of a sudden, and then things are moved around in your stateroom, or whatever they call it, your little cubby hole. And then, you know, people are not, they're saying the weird kind of, they're signaling each other. Look, I can see you're signaling each other. What the hell are you talking about? Are you talking about me? Uh, no, sir. Why would you get that impression? Are you all right? Yeah, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. What is this? Uh, this is a cruise of the Caribbean. We got stops in, uh, you know, Barbados and, uh, you know, uh, wherever. <laughs> the Grenadines and, you know, St. Lucia. And, you know, and, and we got time ashore that you could enjoy. And, and uh all these people have signed up from their walks of the life, lots of different people, lots of diversity. I assure you, sir, these people are not all paid actors watching you. And then your psychiatrist. Why are you being so self-centered to think that the whole world revolves around you? Your family is very concerned about you, that you keep thinking even they are some sort of setup. Why would you think that? You know, there's something very psychologically wrong with you. You need, first of all, we have some psychotropic drugs for you because you need therapy. You obviously need medication. We'll try to manage this outside the hospital, but if not, it's unfortunately, you're going to have to be in the hospital where, you know, we're going to target the shit out of you. <laughs> we're not going to tell you the secret. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. 
hope Rigo is listening to this, you know, because I'm in a kind of rare form today. You know, he's he 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 had the LA thing going, and you know, he had the what I liked about talking to him, and he's a good source too. I mean, it's, it's this nexus point between the witchcraft and the gang stalking, how there's that next, how you see the interconnection of that. Very important that you guys understand that part of it, that it all stems from witchcraft, you know what I mean? Because otherwise, otherwise, what are you going to say? What's the motivation for gang stalking? People are just evil. They just suck. No, there is an actual motivating factor. What would it be? What is the entire point of stalking. What's the entire point of the world? What is what is the point of this? You're going to have to back all the way up to that question, that philosophical question. What is this? Why this? Why now? Why me? And I, it's not. I'm not trying to be glib at all, and you know, not trying to be shallow. But there is, you know, there is a reason. You know, that there is a, um, I mean, this is the, the, the creation, this light versus dark, dark versus light. It's the valley of decision, my friend. They're trying to find out whom you will serve and when times get tough and times look like you're overwhelmed, are you going to give it up? Or are you going to stay the course? And what are you going to do? I don't know. I don't even know one person that, that Jesus took because, I mean, you can't. No, you can't just go to Jesus. There's no such thing as a go to I mean, you can go to Jesus, yeah. But it's Jesus that does the work of salvation, not you. And it's at God's timing, not yours. But if you're thinking of it right now, maybe that is God's timing. He's reeling you in. It's time to go home. Now, in terms of flesh, I've had, you know, I've had the marks and the scratches all over me, you know, those kind of things. And you know, uh, wounds even you know, uh, from, from demonic activity, uh, while I was trying to sleep, whatever. And I, I didn't even know why they were there, but this went on for years and years, you know, just horrible scratch marks across my back. It was terrible demonic activity. Um, along with a nightmare that I can't get my keys. I can't find my way out of here. They won't let me go. Yes, my friends, that's the spiritual side of it. And that was, you know, a long time. And, you know, they say, well, nature, nurture, what shape that? Your reality out there? You you think people are targeting you when you're, you know, 18, 21, 25, 26, 30, 40, 50, 60, etc. Now, I can prove it. You know, and a lot of these people that, that you know, again, they, there's an interdimensional aspect where they're not the ones you know, but they are the ones you know, too. And those people can't look you in the face once you figure it out. Go test them. Go look them in the eye. Go, go. hey, you know, I'm on to you. You know, well, you pulled back in high school. I, You know, I, you guys were all, you know, you did that. You know, tell me the secret. How are you all connected in a hive? How are you all psychically linked? How'd you do that? It's Satanism. It's witchcraft, you idiot. That's what links us in a hive and gives us, a, you know, we, we've, we've sold out to that reality. And, uh, you know, Satan's our friend. And there is no such thing as Satan, by the way. And, uh, you know, I've had a much better life. But, you know, we, we have to, on occasion, are called to duty, which is to harass you. But we all wear masks and no one knows anybody and no one knows anything, you know. You're the one kept in the dark. Even though we all know the secret, you don't know the secret. We all know the secret, but you, you don't know the secret. And look, you act like you, you're a freak. Look, you're a freak. You don't know the secret. Look, everyone's looking at you like you're a freak because you can't figure it out. <laughs> I'm not trying to get inside your head. I'm just trying to reveal what it's like from the inside out. Now, all this has been there, of course. 
You know, one of our first, one of our great books on gang stalking is Young Goodman Brown, right? That's the ultimate. That's like, that's like giving you all the keys to the kingdom right there. And how old is that? Thinking something new? Nope. But here's what I want to impress upon you, and I'm going to leave you with. I'm going to let this be a little bit short because it's, you know, it's 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 good. It's 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 like a work of art today, you know. So I want to just cut it. Number one, you're beloved of the Almighty God. You are you're in a terrible Job kind of test, and Lord's testing you, all right, just to see when will you inquire of Him, when will you come home, when will you, you know. Come home, come home, Ephraim. When will you finally give it up? When will you finally realize you're, uh, you know, outgunned, outnumbered, out everything? You're just going to have to go to Papa here. When are you going to realize that? And that's all being cataloged. When are you going to start, you know, towing the line, you know, as an overcomer and realizing that your flesh is also evil and also opening doors, allowing this to come in? When are you going to? Take responsibility for your life. When are you going to bow down before me, your God, your Father who made you? When are you going to finally get real? And realize that the other side, you know, Satan, witchcraft, all that, that's what that's what's coming at you. That's what's coming at you. It's all coming from witchcraft. When are you going to understand that? It's all very spooky and it's all very coordinated. It's all very, you know... It runs the world. You know, all these people are in the hive mind. They all obey like starlings. You know, they turn this way. They turn that way. They, you know, they, they, they all, you know, the birds that fly in unison. They go this way. They go that way. Almost like it's one big hive, right? Or bees. Bees, too. And who's controlling them? And who's making them put a mask on and come onto the stage with you at the Truman Show and tell you sweet nothings and tell you that there's a job waiting for you or tell you they got people for you to meet? You know, the other thing that's happening to you is you're being bought and sold, right? You are a commodity. You have a price in your head. And uh, the younger you are, the higher the price is, Right? There's a big sexual component to this too. They love to, you know, have their way with you, you know, and if they can if they can start breaking into your place and having sex with you and keeping you on drugs and there's, you know, keeping you in this artificial but it's all about keeping you in an artificial state of being that you cannot escape from. And then they're the gatekeepers around the outside of the perimeter, but they themselves are slaves and soulless and basically gutless, right? They're cowards, all of them. All of your stalkers are coward, 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 coward. You walk up to them, confront them, you'll see. They run, they run the minute you start fighting back. But you have to fight back in spiritual warfare. It's above your pay grade, it's above your mind, it's above your intellect, it's above everything that you know. And, you know, you go, well, but but with the satellites, but this, that... Forget about that. I mean, yes, all the satellites, all the military industrial complex, the entire world is here to harass you, okay? Everyone and all machinery, all architecture, every cell tower, every single piece, every car, every truck, everything is aimed at you. All that exists is aimed at you. That is not an untrue statement. Just try to bust your head out of that limited thinking to make you understand that you're dealing with the whole universe here. Yes, you can trace it to the fact that, you know, you're you're uh, an activist or you did something politically that got you targeted, and that's all that this is. And they need to stop bullying you, stop harassing you, stop the electronic harassment, stop this stuff, stop trying to ruin your reputation so you can't get a job. They need to stop. <laughs> the, who, who's they? Who, who is they? It's your mother, your father, your kid, your so-called friends. Your your ex boss, your ex husband, your ex lover, your ex this, your ex that. It's all those 
They are they, right? That's they. So this whole thing isn't real. That's what I was beginning to think. It wasn't real. So where the hell am I? See, if, if you could get to that point, that's actually very healthy. Because now you're about to reach out for God because you see nothing else. You can't solve it. Your videos cannot solve it. I've watched... I used to watch the, all the videos, keep up with what's going on with people, and then I watched them 10 years ago. I watch them today, there's no difference than 10 years ago. It's like, well, where's the progress here? Well, one bit of progress is people are starting to realize that they were targeted since ch childhood, um, and I'm saying it's before that. <laughs> it's very profound. It's spooky, it's scary. It's on a multidimensional basis, and it is targeting you. Yeah, it's it's basically they want to have their way with you. They want to torture the crap out of you for every single day that you remain here on Earth. And I don't like it either when they send in the strange the strange trucks, the strange cars, the strange vehicles, and they're all just staring at you. The next thing you know, you don't see them again, and there's no follow through. It's like was that? Uh, well, it only happened once, so. Oh, look, it's happening again in a different way. Is that all coming from uh, Control Central? Is that coming from the local FBI office? Is that coming from NSA? I don't know. And the more you say, I don't know, the more they have their way with you, don't they? So you can't say, I don't know, because then you're just this freak. Everyone's in on it but me. And then, you know, and then it turns into the whole world pretty soon. And then yeah, there's no place to duck into. And some people duck into drugs or bad lifestyle choices. And then, you know, the, to try to get out of it in some way. And then fall into the hands of the uh, the people that are, that, that are that playing them. Which is everyone you can think of is playing you. There's nobody you can go confess your secrets to. Nobody you could really spill the beads with to explain your experience to, that they would understand. They're all going to nod up and down, but you're always going to think, do they know something and they're holding back on me? Do they know something? You know, so you try to use trigger. You try to play dumb a little bit. You know, you try to you try to say, and yeah, then, you know, and then out of the blue you go, yeah, all those people down there in the corner, they were following me, but, but uh, then I turned in and, and then you switch the subject real fast to see if that made any effect on them. Have you ever done that? Well, I have. I've played dumb. I've done everything you could do to get them to edit. And, and they do get tripped up every once in a while if you're clever. It's like, well, describe to me what off stage is. I know that I've seen it in another dimension. I've seen the dimension change a couple of times. Where I could see there were people there watching me. They're actual, the beings were actually people. They're actually human beings that are invisible to us here, but they're in another dimension right there. They're, they seem to be watching us. Yes, now you're beginning to understand. Now you're beginning to get it. Now you're beginning to see that, yes, there's other, others there and they're watching you. And they're existing in another dimension where those people that are harassing you, they seem to have access to that dimension and you don't. They seem to be able to go somewhere that you can't figure out. That they pop in from somewhere that you can't figure out. So where is that? You've heard how Satan counterfeits everything that, you know, God has, right? Right. So they would have a heaven now, right? So it's like, it's like, so, so this kind of goes in the realm of possibly a, an alternate second heaven or something. Uh, there is an actual other dimension where there are beings who are watching you and waiting to see what you'll do, hoping. And on the other side, there's angels and things like that. They're hoping that you make the right choice. The whole binary situation that you're in is you can either choose to play ball 
with your stalkers, which could mean your death, or to fight them. Highly recommended. But you realize that you cannot fight with your own flesh and blood and intellect, yes? So you dive into Ephesians 6. Put on the full armor of God. Listen to the Lord. Give you The only thing that you can actually do to win is submit everything to the Almighty God and say, I give up, I quit. Lord, you broke me, take me. Jesus, I not only believe in you, I love you, I need you. Please save me, Lord. Wash me clean with your blood, Lord. This is over my pay grade. I can't do it. Lord, please take me. Please, Lord. I'll live as the extension of your will. My will be done. My will be over with. Your will be done. My will is irrelevant. You're first. I'm second. I can't figure it out. Please, Lord, guide me which way to go, where to drive, where to apply for a job, where to get a... Where there could be a friend, you know. I understand I have to walk a long way in this wilderness without having anybody that I could tell the truth to. I got nobody. Everybody is a betrayer. Everybody is like on the other side of that line on wearing a mask. It's scary as hell, Lord. Please help me. That's the only position that you can take, ladies and gentlemen, with all due respect. Only Jesus is the only one I know who can break this, this this situation, this curse that you're under. And yes, there are other dimensions. There's there's a whole world out there that you don't know of. We call it X, like the X-Files, right? The whole point of this world is to prevent X. So they use you to prevent X. I don't know that sounds weird, but it's you do have a function for them. You're preventing, you know, this explosion of consciousness into freedom beyond, you know, to, to understanding what, what are we really? Who are we really? What are we? We're sons and daughters of the Most High God. That means you're everything and everything. That means you're everything and everywhere. Because you'd have to be of the same substance. You're in God, God in you. Meaning you would be everything and every you'd be everything everywhere. Oh, there's a key, but you can't get your mind around that because that's too big. But somewhere in there is your answer. Why the stalking? Why the curse? Why the targeting? Why the electronic rat? Why the chemtrails? Why the food? Why the GMOs? Why the misdiagnoses in the hospital? Why the trafficking in organs and body parts? Why the why the degradation? Why the why the the, the, the blood the, the global blood sacrifice every day? Why all this? Pull all the covers back. It's just pure hell, pure evil. Why this? Why am I here? What did I do? Do I need to apologize again, Lord? I'll apologize. I'm sorry. What did I do? <clears throat> do you have flesh? Yes, well, then you see, that's what you do. <clears throat> you do your flesh, right? So, therefore, you know, it's justified. Well, how do I get out of it? I'm sick of it. So that's the dilemma, and that's the you know kind of it in a you know in a nutshell. Um, I, I, that goes to the big picture of the problem. And like I say, some setups are so elaborate they go on for generations. I don't know if you knew that, but I just explained that every generation is a setup being controlled by these handlers. And for whatever reason, they're getting something out of it. You know, they this ancient they. And uh, like I say, they watch you from another dimension. They're right there. They're they're all around us. Feeding on the trauma, feeding on the torture, feeding on the degradation. And the people who are targeted are a threat. A threat, you know, meaning that uh, if any of them survives, you know, there's always a possibility this whole thing could come down, i.e. the uh, 
concept of the sole survivor, which goes back to Jesus. Right? So, <laughs> X is what they want to stop. And X is what they can't stop. Uh, there is no gang stalking in X. You could call it, haven't you call it anything? I'm just for the sake of, of uh, discussion, I'm calling it X today. But uh, it is the uh, the rightful uh, uh, end of our journey ends in X. And if X is realized, then they, not only do they not exist anymore, they never have existed in real reality, ever, not even one day. And that's another thing that's above our heads, right? It's above our intellect. So much of this gang stalking is above the intellect of human. And that's what people have to understand, you know, it it's going to take an above human solution to solve an above above human intellect problem. You're going to have to have super intellect, and the super intellect can only come from the super being of the creator. And there's just you know if there was some other way to do it where you could win, I well I've been dealing with this thing since I was. A, a little boy, so I can tell you this. There is no solution available on Earth. I have never seen anyone solve it and, uh, you know, have their perpetrators thrown in jail or whatever they want to do. You know, have these finally get them, yeah, get them, yeah, I'll get them when I'm 22, I'll get them when I'm 29, I'll get them when I'm 34. And they're going to wish they'd ever stalked me and bullied me. I tell you, I'm going to get them. I'm going to catch them. I'm going to get them. I put cameras on my house. I'm going to make sure I get them on camera. Look at that. Stopping by when I'm gone. Breaking into the house. Moving stuff around. Putting cameras everywhere. Microphones. Putting me on closed circuit TV like a some kind of reality show that they love to watch. Some of them coming off stage every once in a while saying, hey, dude, do you have to use so many cuss words? What do you think that's all about? Who do you think the cowboy is in the Big Lebowski? He's the all-seeing eye. The cowboy is always Satan. Don't you get it? He's running everything. He's off stage talking to the dude. He says, hey, dude, do you have to use so many cuss words? You know, He's watching the whole show. He's the narrator. Here, it's surprising to me how many people just don't seem to understand things like that. He is off stage, and he's saying to the dude, why do you have to use so many cuss words? Like it's inside knowledge, like he's been watching on closed circuit TV. He wasn't there when the dude was cussing. How do you see it? How did he know that? Why don't we ask those questions? What were the Cone brothers trying to trying to disseminate there? What were they trying to say? They were saying this is an allegory, this is a metaphor of reality. They were saying this is reality. They're doing what David Lynch did in Mulholland Drive. Why, when these filmmakers confess, can't we see it? Well, I can't, don't get me frustrated. Jeez, man. If you could just see that there are narrators out there, they come in, they say, hey, Zeph, you, you know, do you know my name? No. Hey, you, you, hey, you look happy today. Hey, he's happy today. Wow. Hey, all right. I've never seen you before. I don't know who those people are in the back there by the pharmacy. I don't know who you are. But because I'm triggered, I don't let on, do I? I don't say that to them, do I? I, I kind of duck my head and sheepishly go to the other aisle because I, I can't believe someone said that to me. Well, they're off stage. Who are they? Who are they? How do they know that? I'm not happy that I'm, I'm upset a lot of the time. Well, you look happy today. Or worse, 
to a coworker, hey, he looks happy today. You, you mean me? Oh, they just turn around and walk away. Is that more apropos? You know, even the people that you think are perpetrators, they don't know what's going on. I know what's going on. And I'm telling you, it's above the pay grade of human intellect, but they don't know that. <clears throat> they think they're cooperating and doing their duty as being me members of society. <laughs> they think that one day they're going to win the game and be the boss. I got news for you people. You're never going to win, those of you who serve the devil, who serve the hive mind, who serve the zombie apocalypse. You're never going to win anything. You will be degraded. You will wish you were never born. You will curse the day that you were ever conceived, <clears throat> and you will curse God for it all. You will die backwards, upside down, with your head up your ass. That's about as far as your intellect will take you. So that's about all I can say about it. I mean, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a, look, there's a lot of evil in the world. And, um, you know, bullying, stalking, all that stuff starts in the spirit. So spirit trumps the flesh. It all begins in the spirit. And it begins in grade school. And it begins when people learn to bully other people. And it starts there. And it just doesn't start. It, it just becomes more sophisticated, more buried, more nodding and winking. You know what I mean? It just becomes more uh, hard to detect, but it's there. It never changes. Just be glad that you're not one of them. I know. But just think about being one of them, what your life would be. In other words, other people dictate to you your reality, what you'll be doing every day. You have to obey what you're told. You have no mind or no life of your own. Okay, well, that's that's being one of them. So at least being you, you're an individual. You still have some options. You still have free will. You still are not one of them. You're still not part of their system. You're still... Oh, oh okay, well, some of you who were initiated into their system and, and then you figure out that it's not for you. What do you, the only way out of it then is Jesus. Oh, come on, don't be an idiot. It's Jesus or bust. That's the only way you're getting out of anything. If Jesus won't take you, you're just going to have to keep begging every day. Prove to Jesus that you really are worthy, you know, consistent, that you know the difference between good and evil, that you know what this world is, that you understand and you're ready, you're ready to submit to the Almighty God. You're, you know where your free will has to go. You know where you must go. You know what you must do. And you have to prove that. That's called overcoming. There's no confusion in you. You know where you don't want to be. Well, no, and I don't recommend, you know, fighting them in the flesh. I do not recommend, you know, uh, shooting them, of course. I don't recommend violence of any kind. You know, if you want to play a little street theater back on them, that's, that's fine. The street theater setups, friends, look, that's just like that after a while you should just, you know, just realize you're going to – now, I know it's really scary. I know, I know at one point uh, because there are criminals involved and they can, you know – drive a van up and we used to have this problem where the van would be close to the curb we had to get away from the curb because they're going to throw us in the van and kidnap us i understand that part of it too then you disappeared forever got it yeah there's a danger they could kill you that's right at any time that's right and it all goes back to satan and satan's minions and satan's lair say the, the, the whole the whole kingdom that's submerged be beyond this reality that we can't see rendering this reality little more than the Truman Show. And the fact that they're off stage whispering and cackling about you means that you're not one of them, which means you're beloved of God. Go home. That's my advice to all you who are stuck. Go home. Become fervent in the Lord. Rebuke them in Jesus' name. Rebuke them uh, the way that, uh, they re that Jesus cast out demons. Cast, you know, bind their demons. Give them a spirit of confusion. 
If they won't give up the demons, bind them, silence them, take command. For those of you who are more advanced, take command. Prove yourself worthy of the, of the Holy Lord. Take command of the situation like Jesus. You know, imitate Christ. Take command of that situation. They never knew what Jesus was going to do. They kept trying to follow him and stalk him and target him. And he would just keep, he just did what he saw the father doing. And that's what dictated his steps this way, that way, the other way. And they, could, they couldn't keep up. Govinda was talking about that yesterday. And, uh, okay, well, that's about, you know, I mean, that's that's as deep as it gets. I can't do it any better than that. That's, that's you know, I'm, I'm always, oh, well, how did, does it ever stop? No, it never stops. Uh, here's the words of the TIs out there. Uh, you know, I mean, that's a cute term, TI. It's deeper than that. But, no, it doesn't stop, just so you know. Oh, there could be the illusion of stoppage, and then you're somewhere, and you're, you know, in a f- foreign place, and you're a little under stress, and all, all of a sudden it starts up again, you know, out of nowhere, where you thought it was gone. Yep, they're notorious for that. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a big one up, up their sleeve. What just, they, they want to have the activity be low, and so just when you feel more confident, all of a sudden they spring it on you again. Because that's maximum trauma, maximum adrenaline. That's what they feed on. Just like, you know, the cannibals amongst us feed on adrenochrome, right? Adrenochrome. That, that, that adrenaline pumped out by the blood when a person's traumatized and dying. And they want to suck that blood down like vampires because they're just that stupid, these people. They're just utterly stupid, physical balls of putrid sewer water. You know, and people worship them. Oh, you should have been president. You know, oh, I bowed down to you. I can't wait to get some more abortions. I'm just looking forward to it. Thank you. I know Hollywood, the gates will open up because I've had 50,000 abortions. So I'm somebody. I'm not some nobody. Did you see that demon-possessed girl? That Ocasio woman. Did you see her from the the, the 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 one that upset the old old oligarch guy in New York? Um, and they're just did you? She's completely demonically possessed. Okay, I know the look. I, that's a demon inside her. Those eyes, everything. I, I know the look. I've I've been through it a million times. That is a demon, and they they are worshiping a demon. <laughs> And when the demon manifests, she's ugly. She's got like teeth that look like they're dripping with flesh. Her eyes are bugged out. She's ugly, ugly, ugly woman. But when you look at her on other side, when that's not happening, she's an attractive young woman. But when the demon's there, it's this ugly monster, right? And she's totally glowing. She's got this glow. Looks like she just killed 50 people, you know, this glow. And uh, and look, look at how they're gathered around worshiping her. That, this is your big problem right now. The targeting, all that stuff, you know, is, you have to understand, it's political too. And so anybody that's, that's with Trump right now is, is, is pretty much targeted. You know what I mean? All of the above things that I've talked about can happen and, then, and even more. But I mean, that all goes to, uh, again, those that, that are Trump have, supporters have been targeted to be ejected out of restaurants. I mean, all these people are just waiting to pounce on you. This is real targeting and bullying. I mean, this is this is big league. It's gone mainstream. It's an epidemic right now. Targeting. And I, you know, people have said I'd say Trump is targeted. People go, ah, he's not targeted. He is targeted. He's been targeted for a coup d'etat, for violent coup, for being violently removed from office, only because he's got muscle, he's got stuff you don't see uh protecting him, but otherwise he'd be you know, ripped to shreds. Anyway, most people are steeped in ignorance, and I know that most people... Uh, oh, the other danger about the whole gang stalking thing, it's getting away from you guys because it's gone so mainstream, it's every other person now. Okay, so that kind of club of being a TI, that little club, that's over with now. You need to let that go. There's no club anymore. 
the, you know, the, you're just talking about half the world now. Because it, it, it's so widespread. It's it's just like anyone that disagrees, you know, now, boom, they're, they get it. They get the treatment. So uh, realize that, you know, and, and just, just kind of understand that there's a lot of people that now share your dilemma. You may know a lot more than them, but they're now beginning to get the, the, the effects of, you know, stalking, bullying, uh, being targeted, being thrown out of restaurants, to be shunned, to be, you know, just, you know, as people get to know, it's, you know, they say, okay, here's the list. That person over there, that they're on the list. They might never have been on the list before. Now they're on the list and then people at random come at them and shun them or say things only they know. You know, all that kind of, all those setups. And they're freaking out because they don't even know what what the hell is going on except that they were a Trump supporter. Yeah, 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 that's going on. And funny thing, Trump's in office and there's a lot of pain there. And he can't stop the, you know, various agencies and rogue agents who do this to people. He can't stop it. Even though he's president, so you've got you know. I'll be very interested to see where this goes the next you know the next year or two. Uh, I knew if I just held on, you know, from high school. I knew if I just held on, eventually I'd have my answer. Eventually I'd understand, you know, because I'd be like driving down Sunset Boulevard. There'd be everyone would be out on their, you know, on the sidewalk staring at me and pointing at like two in the morning, you know, it's like, I mean, talk about a setup. That's too much, you know, or being followed by these triangular UFOs around, you know, driving around and I point them out and people go, you're completely nuts. There's nothing there. And, you know, it goes, no, I mean, it goes on and on and on and on. Satanic abuse, satanic ritual abuse, people in the Satanism, satanic covens, and then them tied in with the UFOs and the aliens and admitting it. And then you have people like Bryce Taylor, flying around on these things, you know, as a cocktail waitress, a type of, you know, like a stewardess. Oh, yeah. No, no. I mean, that's the stuff that, that, uh, that you know, Gunderson, I guess, took to the grave. You know, Kenadachi, other people that were tied in with the Sioux Ford, they couldn't, uh, you know, get into that part of it. They're, they're, she was thinking about writing another book about the, about the you know, the, the really weird stuff, right? But it never it never happened. She just wanted to drop it and uh, go on with her life. And, you know, she realized after the book came out that nothing was going to change. Nobody was going to go to jail. Nobody was going to pay. Nothing was going to happen. And it didn't. In a normal world, yes, there should have been adjudication. There should have been, if there were crimes committed, they should have been prosecuted. But it's not normal here. The only thing that's kind of normal is X. X is beyond this. And out there, you know, there is, it's really in here. It's really within my self. There is this liberation. There is this mass exodus out of this enslavement camp we are in, you know. And the reason they target you, like I say, is because you're a threat. That's Number one, I mean, it's, I'm not trying to, again, not trying to be shallow or, or, you know, just, just, I'm trying to be succinct here. But if you're a threat, I mean, you know, if you have a high intelligence, you're a threat. You get targeted for that. Uh, if, yeah, yeah, sure, you vote the wrong way, you do the wrong thing, you know, you've, whatever. And now, like I say, it's an epidemic. And see, if you wear a MAGA hat somewhere, they're, they're, they're going to coalesce around you. They're going to, you know, they're going to wreck your car. They're going to, you know, pop your tires. I went through a whole period where I had my tires popped, the truck, uh, you know, sabotaged, and it was just like a wave. And then, it, you know, finally it subsided. But ever since then, I had to watch it. You know, I've, you know you're around people, they say they're going to take care of you, and you know, they, everyone seems fine. And then you get, then you see that you've been messed with. and the, But they seem fine on the surface. You know, like like we were just people. Well, there, this thing isn't really happening. This this other world isn't really happening, right? I'm just a person. You're a person. You're going to take care of my truck. Okay, cool. I'll be, you know, thank you. And uh, that turns into something else, right? Turns into this this horrible thing. That's right. That's right. They seem normal on the surface. They seem like, you know, everything seemed okay. 
So, so understand this part of the lesson. It's never okay, and they all know. Okay, they all know. So just being, you know, nice, just being, you know, like I'm going to forget all about it now, just kind of do a normal transaction. There are no normal transactions. You, you, you know, when you are suspicious, even paranoid, they, they tend to behave more because they don't want to tip it off. Better than just being oblivious because then they, they're going to try something. I don't know why, you know, it's, it's, it's a horrible, 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 horrible conundrum that people are in. And I feel very sorry, but I've, I've, I'm kind of happy I'm not alone. Trish and I have had double, you know, experiences where the, the whole thing started in a random place like in Denver, Colorado. You know, all you know, and it just was all going at the same time. All these random people that didn't know each other, and you know, to, and there was a van too, tried to you know throw us in the van, and we kept away from that. And then they were sabotaging the truck and giving me a misalignment, and they were they're all doing everything on purpose, nodding and winking. I mean, the whole thing. They don't know us. They don't know us at all. All the, they don't know each other. But there they were, all getting coalesced. We saw it. Freaked out. Drove down the freeway, you know, the, down the 25. Crazy. Tried to get out of there. Once I, I made them do the alignment right so I could drive the thing straight. They were doing this on purpose. I got down there to this uh, hotel. The political debate going on. Had a few drinks. Thank God. Still didn't calm down the adrenaline, you know, the adrenaline was pumping. And, uh, you know, watching the political debate on what, CNN or whatever. Had a bite to eat in the restaurant. I don't know what hotel it was, some hotel you know, on the side of the road near the 25, in, you know, Pueblo, Colorado, someplace like that, you know. After driving, 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 trying to get away. And it all kind of subsided, got to sleep. Next day, drove home. Down the 25 to Santa Fe. In the aftermath of this horrible attack, which, you know, we watched the setup happen out of the blue in organic real time. Nothing planned, just and it's how? How? It's impossible. Well, you know, maybe now it's not a white knuckle. I mean, you know, this is white knuckle stuff here. I mean, then you're, you know, you, 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 what are they trying to do? Take the dust, throw me in the van? What are they trying to do here? Kill us. But it's all coordinated. Like, you know, I'll do this. I'll have to do this. All the random people. And, you know, the hotel we're going to go to is a holiday inn. There are all these, like, drug addicts and prostitutes in the hallway blocking so we couldn't get in. And I'm like, I don't, I'm not going there. How how they all how that all happened? Mm -hmm. We're supposed to go to a concert, and it prevented us from going. We had to peel out. So that was the end of the uh, end of that too. Well, we had been to another concert, and we had prayed. And they tried to whip up this uh, demonic possession at the end, and then get everybody in the hive, right, for this final set they wanted to do. It was like TSL, you know, Trans-Siberian, you know, jack-off club, whatever. And, um, you know, they're pretty good, you know. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not trying to belittle anyone, but, I mean, they tried to whip it up at the end, a satanic, uh, you know, sort of fervor. I don't know if they were going to kill somebody or what, but it got completely nuts, and then, you know, we we neutralized it with prayer, and then they, when they stopped in seven encore, everybody got up and left. And they would say, where, what, what's, where are you going? What's happening here? And I think we got the blame for that because we were the two people praying to stop the possession. And it worked. So then the next concert, you know, all of a sudden there was a blockade, right? See how that works? In other words, you're more important and more and bigger than you think you are. 
They see you as much bigger than you see yourself. You see yourself as this random little you know, rag doll that gets kicked around all day long, right? Where in the other realm, you're a fierce warrior. That's what they see. That's why they're reacting to you the way they are. They wouldn't put all those resources on you unless you were a fierce warrior. That is what is within you is fierce. That frightens them or they wouldn't come at you. Understand that. But if they wreck your self-esteem and you see yourself as nothing, you know, you hate yourself, they could just kick you all over the field then. They have a way with you. <laughs> and the churches where, you know, a lot of the stalking goes on there too. They can say to you, you know, ooh, you have so much pride, you're going to have to lower that. Yeah, lower it so we can get in there and traumatize you. <laughs> Okay, gang. All right. And Jesus. Oh, uh, yeah. We, I'm not talking much about, you know, you've, you've had Violet and John and, you know, the plight that's going on. It's been very horrific and, you know, it's a really horrifying things, but I can't really go into it specifically. We're just trying to... Uh, it's, it's, you know, I guess you thank God you live in the United States despite all the problems because in some parts of the world it's just terribly cruel and barbaric and I'm sorry we're trying to save some children here and uh, you know once you see things you know cruel people you know you, you really you know you forget about the gang stalking for a while you know you forget about all that stuff because you just see people just randomly just kill each other and you know for no reason right they're just people just they just like to kill and, uh, you know, you get threats and you know, death threats and things like that. Here, there's law enforcement, right? There's somebody that, even though you claim to be a T.I. and all this, there's somebody that will help. There's more checks and balances. In some parts of the world, they just kill you. There is no setups. You know, there's, it's just like death. That's the setup. So just thank God you don't live in the third world because it's, uh, it's a very barbaric and, and very um, frightening place, but Jesus is Lord, and he will get us through, whether it's the third world, whether it's this world, anywhere in the world. It's a very harsh existence for a lot of people, you know, it's, it's, it's especially now with the political season coming up. It's, it's, it's like I say, the, the gang stalking epidemic is on, you know, the bullying of people. It do, doesn't stop there. I mean, someone wears a MAGA hat once. And then they're 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 bugged, their apartment is wrecked, their car is sabotaged, their kids are turned against them, the, the neighbors are turned against them. They do all of it, all the gaslighting, all the street theater, everything, to a guy that wears a MAGA hat once somewhere, seen on camera. All the whole litany of you know the whole menu, gets dumped on them overnight. They took Stephen Miller, speechwriter, right. And they put out wanted posters on him. They're trying to get him hurt. They're trying to get someone to kill him. Yeah. They're trying to get... That's gang stalking. Okay? That's what we're talking about. One-on-one. Okay? It's happening at that level. They're, 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 they're putting together death campaigns for Trump supporters Trump and Trump workers to ruin their reputation, to ruin their lives, to make sure they never work again. To, you know, this is... It's, it's terrible. But it is mainstream now. And so you guys got to accept that part of it. And I know I've given you some inside baseball stuff, but, you know, mainly this, 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 this hellish thing really goes to a spiritual reality that is the overarching thing here, okay? And uh, with that, I bid you shalom, and I'm going to uh, take my cue here. I don't think I could do it better than that. I think I tried to get it all, you know, into one cohesive thing so that people could understand. You know, they're not nuts. You're, you guys are not crazy. But the depths of this, it's infinite what, what they can do. It's infinite above our intellect to understand the, 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 the absolute dimensionality of it and the, the random nature. It's just, it's, it's mind-boggling. So that's not where we win. We win in the spirit, right? Okay.